living in a country where you have health care. Where you don't have to worry about going to the doctor if you're in a car accident. Where, what if your children are in a car accident? You don't really have to worry about if he's going to die or live, your wife. According to the G20 health study, health care systems and health care reform in the G20 countries, compared with the World Economic Forum, Ernest and Young, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, Cuba, Panama, Peru, Uruguay, and Venezuela, I have public health care provided. Mexico plans to accomplish public universal health care by 2011. Surprised? Now imagine the most industrialized nation in the world with the highest gross domestic product per capita. That country does not guarantee access to health care. That country, unfortunately, is our country, the United States of America. Many of us here tonight are stretching every penny to make ends meet. The majority of us probably don't have health care for justifiable reasons. Today, I will persuade you to demand universal health care for your government. First, the United States is in urgent need. The, United, the current health care system is in urgent need of improvements. Second, millions of Americans cannot afford health care. And third, universal health care is the solution to our problem. I will start by analyzing our current health system. The United States health system is in need of desperate improvements. According to the case for single payer, Universal Healthcare in the United States 2007 by John R. Batista, the United States ranks poorly relative to other industrialized nations despite having the best trained care providers and the best medical infrastructure of any industrialized nation. This is, in, this is an inefficient system that must change. Are there any other interests at hand that prevent the best trained doctors from performing like they should? Sounds like it. Dr. Karen Davis, PhD, in her article, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, an international update on comparative performance, she states that the US spends far higher than any nation in the world, but ranks really bad on quality, efficiency, access, safety, and wait times. Do you see something wrong with this picture? You should. Quick, hand me a sample, doctor. We've got to. Don't do it. My chauffeurs have assured me it's not medically necessary. Even if more people have access to health care, they should be shocked to find the high cost. Millions of Americans cannot afford health care. According to the World Health Organization, there are 55 million Americans without health care coverage. This lack of health care coverage has serious negative implications and consequences, both economic um, consequences and also to our communities and our people around us. According to the study of of the Board of Health Care Services, and the Institute of Medicine, the United States is the only wealthy industrial nation without health insurance. So are you telling me that we can afford war but not taking care of our population? <clears throat> According to the healthcare website published by CEIU, 32% of Hispanics, 20% of Blacks, 18% of Asians, and 11% of Whites don't have health insurance. It can be anyone here in this room. Healthcare spending per capita. As you know, the U.S. ranks uh, pretty high on healthcare spending. Health, universal healthcare is the solution to our problems. According to a study by Professor Glide, Healthcare Financing Efficiency and Equity, almost all European systems are financed through a mix of public and private contributions. This means that the majority of us here today We'll have to fund our healthcare system primarily by tax revenues, which allocate to maintain susti um, sustained healthy citizens. The money that we're using in other areas, like fighting wars, we can use that to uh, saving lives in our country. This solution calls for drastic change, not only in our health system, but also in our mentality as a nation. 
A shift has to be made from a selfish, short-term mentality to that of a long-term mentality that will benefit everyone in our country. We are investing in human capital and in our society's well-being. Efficiency. United States again, in terms of money, ranks really high compared to Germany, Canada, France, Australia, United Kingdom. Out-of-pocket medical costs, the same. Access. We can't get to a doctor when we need it. We're paying too much money. Now that we talk about the effects um, of healthcare, let's go on to more things we can do. According to the G20 study, 59% um, of health insurance is already paid by our government here in the U.S. And that is financed through federal, state taxes, property taxes, and tax subsidies. A healthcare system that we can all afford, we can still give our money to our government through our taxes, and that way they can help not only us by reducing the price, but also everyone who doesn't have health insurance. A single-payer system could save Two million and eight, two eight, 286 million a year in overhead and paperwork. Also, it can save us in wasteful and in inefficient tendencies that the health, current health system has already encountered. As I have stated today, the United States' current health system is in need of desperate improvements. Second, there are millions of Americans without health insurance. And finally, the United Health a universal health care system is what we need here in the United States. Health care in the United States requires a mentality change for us to speak up, wake up, and also to invest in our population. That is 32% of Hispanics, 20% of Blacks, 18% of Asians, and 11% of Whites. So next time you see universal health care on the ballot, I hope you will be part of the solution. If not, you would be one of the 18 million people who died because they don't have health care. Thank you.